Yeah, this is my first drive. I'd say that in uh, inverted commas because it's not my first drive. It's about my ninth drive. But for you lot, it's my first drive on YouTube in my new Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. I'm sort of standing a fair old distance away from the car because from this distance here, uh, if I zoom in and get some focus, look how good looking that car is. And I think beautiful is a word that I'm going to be using a lot to describe this car. Let's go for a little wander over there. Uh, from every angle, like the wheels, the body shape, the body colour, the interior, under the bonnet, like you've got that nice 2.9 litre V6 twin turbo engine, apparently derived from a, a V8 Ferrari engine, but we won't talk too much detail about that because Alfa Romeo claimed that it isn't a Ferrari derived engine. On the underside of the bonnet, literally like the underneath of the bonnet, you can see it's exposed carbon, and then on the top, almost giving it like a, a bit of a deceiving look, we've got painted on the top half, and then the underside exposed carbon. It's a stock engine, by the way, 500 brake horsepower. That's a mad amount of power in it for a stock car. And um, as we wander around, we've got more carbon fiber on the front splitter there. That is also an active aero split splitter, which drops as the car hits 70 mile an hour to create more downforce. It's got the upgraded 90 inch wheels. Again, I'm gonna be talking probably about things that I've already spoke about in the introduction video, but I wanna remind you of all the reasons why I really wanted this particular car, right? There is lots of Julia Quadrifolos on the market in a minute, but this particular one, there isn't any that resemble the spec of this, especially for not for this price point. As we continue on walking around the Quadrifolio badge there on the wings, carbon fiber along the bottom, uh, hashtag on it stickers priority first mod there carbon fiber shell seats look at them seats man what a feature that is and if we hop on the inside as well carbon fiber steering wheel option we've got carbon more carbon down there around the seats uh, carbon on the door cards carbon on the center console and then on the dash just over there it's also spec with a red dash and harman cards and sound system and then as we come around the rear We've got carbon fiber spoiler, non-carbon fiber rear diffuser. That would look amazing if that was carbon. Uh, might have to try and make that happen at some point. Carbon fiber roof and a carbon fiber prop shaft, all right? Right now we've got the car running in race mode. Uh, if I flick it off of race mode, it's got the DNA system. Sorry about that bleeping, that's the seatbelt, by the way. This, the exhaust note changes slightly. So if we go back up to race, a little bit deeper opens up the flaps and if I give it a little rev it will remind you how good it sounds ready we won't go too mad because I've got neighbors here uh, but you get the idea and this video is like I say the first drive of it we won't talk too much about the external of it we've done enough for that in the first video I've also done probably too much of it in this video let's prioritize let's get in the driver's seat and hit the road can't believe it at long last, I am driving my Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio on my channel. Now, as we put out a binker, um, yeah, all good. Always oh, stop start off, we don't like, that, like the use of that, do we? Um, we're currently in natural mode, right? I think that's what it stands for, yeah. N for natural, DNA, right? DNA is like the little drive select mode we've got down here, next to the gear sticks, really clever. Um, I suppose it's clever, I suppose there's a lot of cars nowadays have got this sort of stuff. But what it offers is a range of driving modes, right? In A, it stands for active efficiency. You've got an efficient mode. I think that's more for uh, like winter winter driving maybe then n stands for natural i'm guessing that's like the the daily driving mode i don't know if you notice it there but it just dropped a gear uh so we sort of must hang out the revs a bit longer and then d is for dynamic that's like a sports mode again we've just dropped another gear uh, so we're a bit more a bit more throttle response a bit more on point and if you press and hold it 
it then puts it up to race mode, which is like that, even that functionality there. It's very similar to uh, like the steering wheel on Ferrari, strangely. Listen to the downshifts. I flick it over to manual, which is uh, just my preferred way of driving. I have been driving it in race mode a lot, so when you put it in race mode, the valves open on the exhaust, uh, so it's a bit more noisier. Throttle response, throttle response is a bit more sharp. Turns all the traction and driving modes off, so you're completely on your own. Uh, I'm guessing that's why they've made it a, a press and hold switch, not a switch that you can just accidentally turn on, uh, like by mistake as you're driving. So yeah, you literally have to physically put some effort into that switch to make sure you know that you're about to enter that mental driving mode. Now, uh, I have been driving it in natural mode, I think. Back end. And uh, in natural mode, this van wants to be on my side of the road, thank you, sir. <laughs> Back end. It's a wet road, and I talked about the wet road situation in the M5 video. It is a bit of a problem, but you know what? I kind of like the challenge of driving a rear wheel drive car. I like to have a bit of a tear up, and the rear wheels are. This is a waste of time. It's also a waste of time, by the way, because the back tires or the full set of tires are just, they're just poor tires. They've got good grip on them, but they're a, they're, a, they're a cheap brand and that don't help, does it? So we've got bad conditions, it's cold, 500 brake horsepower, rear wheel drive and um, cheap tires. So first thing I need to do really, preferably is change the tires. But yeah, I was saying I've been driving it a lot in natural mode and I think in natural mode, um, as far as I can make out, in the higher gears, it switches off one or two of the cylinders, saves fuel. I don't fully know how it works. It's a very clever system. It's a nice idea. At first thought, it's a little bit of a gimmick, but do you know what I have noticed? This car does not use anywhere near as much fuel as a lot of the, car, a lot of the other cars that I've been driving lately, so that's nice. Now, when I sold my M6, I was faced with the challenge of replacing it for something as unique, as special, as exciting as that car was. Now, there wasn't anyone on YouTube really with an M6, and certainly not one in signal green. Back end. <laughs> so, uh, and I did love that car. I had it for a long time, a long time for me, probably about six months. I absolutely loved that car. It was a great thing, very quick, very, well tuned, well set up, well balanced, it was perfect, right? And on social media, it really stood out, like in a thumbnail or an Instagram picture, it was a leery looking thing. And trying to replace it was a difficult challenge. The M5 was the obvious thing to do, yeah? It was an obvious thing to do. Go and buy an M5 competition. It's the better, newer, four-door version of your M6 cow. And I bought it, and I just didn't gel with it. I didn't love it. It wasn't me. Um, I didn't feel excited about keeping it. I didn't feel excited about tuning it, and, as I said in the previous video, I got off with this. And this is a car, not just a Judah Quadrifoglio, but this particular one is the one that I've always wanted. And I thought, this just this just feels right. So I bought it and I am so happy with this car. I've got no motive or incentive to sell it. I don't need to part of it. What would I part of it for? I'm sure oh, I'll say that now, it will happen, but I've got no motive to do that right now. All right? I want to make it clear that this car is staying. I want to tune it. I'm really curious to see what it's going to be like tuned. Obviously at the minute with these tires on, we ain't having much joy putting any traction down to the ground, but uh, with better tires, with better tuning, um, and a better day, I suppose, better conditions, it will be a completely different thing altogether. So I am excited about tuning it. More importantly, it is unique. There isn't any that you rarely see them on the road, especially with this spec level. So that's quite nice. And then secondly to that, on YouTube, on social media, I don't know anyone who's got one. I don't know anyone, certainly not in this country, that's done content on one. And it'll be nice to go on that journey through buying it. You've seen me buy it. You've seen me do the first drive in it and now go away and tune it and make it my own, which is what I really like to do. The first thing I want to get done is, I mentioned, I think, or I might have thrown it in on the previous video, that these carbon fiber seats uh, were a three, three and a half thousand pound spec option, right? But if you spec these carbon seats, you don't get heated seats. Now, a lot of people will know, a lot of you that follow my videos, you will know that I love heated seats. I have to have heated seats in my car. And it's one of the things that, uh, a bit of a dilemma, I was thinking, oh, I really want them seats, but I want them to be heated. So I've obviously bought a car with heated seat, with, with carbon seats, sorry. And what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna try and get heated 
heater elements installed into these seats so hopefully that will come in a future video i know it's a bit maybe a bit of a boring video but to me um i am daily driving this car rear wheels uh and i do want my little comforts like that the steering wheel needs a little retrim again it's pointless stuff but it's stuff that's really important uh it's done forty-five thousand miles a little bit of wear on the top of the steering wheel there control customs i'm going to sort out a steering wheel for me by the way if you want your steering wheel retrimmed by cold control customs um they're offering a 10 percent discount to my followers because so many of you buy steering wheel retrims from them uh just quote calvin 10 when you make your order i thought i'd throw that in there um whilst i've got that on my mind now as you get up into the rev range uh the dash sort of screams at you with loads of different colors can't really do too much because back ends trying to escape uh, so on the dash we've got a mixture of analog dials I love that so you see the rev counter just dancing all over the place when you <laughs> when you came in it and then in the middle you've got an LCD display with all the different multi colors when you put it into race mode it changes well, every single mode whether you're in, you're in dynamic natural or active economy mode or race it changes color to suit um, the type of mood you're in the type of mode you're in sorry and uh, yeah, that's all quite nice, quite a nice bit of drama. The infotainment system, this is all very new, you know, this is all, getting in this car, trying to understand how it all works and getting used to it, getting to grips with it. It was all quite an exciting experience. <laughs> and um, again, making it exciting, not just for me, but for you lot. As I was navigating my way around this, this um, infotainment system, oh, I didn't have a bloody clue what I was doing. Obviously it's all obvious, it's all black and white, but it's nice to have something different. I even like the clicks, you know, the little clicks of the wheel when you navigate your way through the infotainment system, love that. Now this is compared to an M3, an F80 M3 is the competitor to this car. It's also a six cylinder bi-turbo, four door saloon car, built by the Germans obviously. Um, and uh, I love, I love F80 M3 competitions. They are probably the best thing on the road for the price point that they're at. Until, guys, until you get in the driver's seat of one of these, because trust me, anyone, that likes to have a little bit of a tear up, likes to drive. If you're a driver, I'm not to say that I'm a, I'm a top class driver, but I've, you know, we all like to think we are, don't we? Um, I like to have fun in the car. I like to have a bit of a leery tear up and I like to enjoy myself in the driver's seat. And this car, nothing, I promise you, there is nothing that drives like this car does. It feels nimble, it feels light, it feels agile, it feels, Delicate. They're all things that you just use words that you use to describe something that's probably not good. But it's also very refined, very on point, and savage all at the same time. And do you know what? If unless you're an absolute brand snob, you're gonna go for the M3, right? But if you're not a brand snob, this car will excite you better. It will make you smile more, and it'll make you think, you know what? I'm glad I didn't choose the F80 M3 over the Alfa Romeo Julia Quadrifoglio. And coming out of my mouth, that's a big statement. And I honestly, honestly think that. When I first drove this car, the first thing I noticed was the steering Like, But that sounds like a stupid thing to say. Why is that even important? But the way that that's responding to the movement of my hands, again, no other car on the whole car market does that. And it is so strange. When you get in this car and drive it, all these little things that entertain you, excite you, whatever. This car exceeds your expectations to a point that you couldn't imagine. Now, Alfa Romeo can either take this as an insult or a compliment, but I am shocked how impressed I am with this car. It is that good. I think I'm gonna leave it as that. I can't really drive too mad. It's school run time. We're just in a village somewhere. I don't actually know where I am. I have been here before though. Um, just went on a random little detour. I am at work at the minute, by the way, not doing nothing because we're not really allowed to, are we? But as a rule, I like to keep busy, get up, do stuff, clean cars, get organised, you know, do whatever I can to keep busy, film videos, and uh, it's not too bad. I hope everyone's all right because it is a very dull time of life at the minute, uh, the weather included. But yeah, fingers crossed everyone's all right. Please keep positive, keep busy, make that a priority. And we'll all come out the other end of this. Um, Shining well, I hope, all right? So yeah, gonna leave it as that. I hope you like this video. Hope you like the Alpha, I absolutely love it. 
like I say, staying with me. We're gonna get it tuned. I'm gonna get all my little bits done first, I think, and then prioritize and let's uh, get it tuned. She's got her alcohol. She's happy, isn't she? She ain't bored about COVID. Alcohol is priority, but yeah. Hit like if you like this video. Hit subscribe if you're new to my channel. Give me a follow on Instagram at Calvin's Car Diary. The next video that will follow will be, I think, the Pi Exchange on the M5. I'm not sure. I'll let you know in a sec. Uh, so look out for that and done. See you in my next video. In the next episode of Diary of Car Trader, find out what car I took in as a Pi Exchange against my F90 M5 competition.